But nature has a different plan in mind. Sometime that night, the storm shifts west toward the Gulf of Mexico. And that's where they lost track of it. It was away from land. It's out in the open water, but at the time, what they knew of storms then was that they'd keep moving north. Their assumption is wrong. It hit the Gulf of Mexico, which already was superheated from an especially hot summer. What you had then was essentially a machine, um, um, a heat engine, with um, almost an inexhaustible supply of energy to draw upon. The wind speed builds as the storm feeds ravenously on the heat of the Gulf water. It keeps strengthening and it reaches hurricane strength, which is 74 miles an hour. Now we've got a hurricane. This giant storm was moving forward probably at about 10 miles an hour, very slowly. Which is significant because as it moves, building more and more power, suddenly this um, fairly routine tropical cyclone became a monster. September 7th, 1900. It's a hot and muggy Friday. The humidity is almost unbearable. The waves lapping against Galveston shores are as warm as bathwater. Isaac's mood, indeed that of the whole town, is buoyed by a headline in the Galveston Daily News. The new census figures are out. The city's population is 37,789. In less than 10 years, Galveston has grown by a staggering 30%. This city was absolutely convinced, beyond doubt, that it was going to become the New York City of the Gulf. This is almost as if Mother Nature were saying, just as the storm is approaching, we just want you to be aware of how many people you stand to lose. The hurricane is relentlessly making its way towards the island. 120-foot swells ripple across the Gulf. Winds over 150 miles per hour scream westward along the open sea. Pressure plummets around its eye, and spiraling winds carry air at over a million tons per second. The key part of the storm is an area known as the eye wall. It's the intense band of convection that forms around the center of low pressure. The very high winds are concentrated around that core of thunderstorms in the middle of the hurricane. Along the eye wall, the winds begin to blow so fast, they create a centrifugal force. They are literally lifting the surface of the sea, creating a huge circular formation that stretches up to two miles above the open water. The ocean rushes outward from the core of the storm, producing what is often the most lethal part of the hurricane, the storm surge. Storm surge is one of the most deadly threats that a hurricane presents as it's making landfall. Probably the best analogy would be to say if you have a, a plate and you put a little bit of water on it, then you blow the plate, blow on a plate, what happens? Well, the water's gonna flop right off. Same thing when you get a, a shallow body of water like the Gulf of Mexico is, Hurricane comes along, it pushes all that water onto the land, and if it gets to be 10, 15, or 20 foot high, people drown. That mass of water is now headed straight for Galveston, Texas, a city where the highest elevation is just eight feet above sea level. This whole situation was just poised for a disaster. You had all these thousands of people living right next to the coast on an island that's only a couple feet above sea level. It's the heart of the hurricane season, so it's almost the worst case scenario. In 24 hours, Galveston will make history as the site of America's deadliest natural disaster.